Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is a problem all about Poisson's ratio. We've got a cube of high strength concrete and measures 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. And we have compression applied along one axis. And specifically, we're going to call that the x direction. And the amount of that compressive force is 500 kips. So I'm going to pick this to be my x direction. I'm going to pick this to be my y direction. And this one I'll pick to be my Z. And let's put 500 kips of compression into the concrete. There we go. All right. It says, please assume linearly elastic material behavior. Although in reality, concrete's stress strain curve gradually transitions from linear to nonlinear. So if I wanted to plot normal stress versus normal strain for unreinforced concrete, so I don't have any steel reinforcement inside. The way I would expect that to look, and this is a compressive plot, this is a compressive plot, is something like this. So re unreinforced concrete will have a linearly elastic range here at the beginning of the curve. The slope is the modulus of elasticity. And then we have that kind of gradual transition into inelastic behavior. Uh, we would not say that this material has the yield point phenomenon or that it possesses a yield point. All right, I'm gonna go ahead um, on another layer I have the material properties table queued up. And um, this is in the fundamentals of engineering equation book that's used for the fundamentals of engineering exam. Um, this is table two, average mechanical properties of typical engineering materials, US customary units. And use these values for the specific details listed here and then if you want more generics you go to a different table and over here in the materials column we have metallics up here and then all the non-metallics are down below and the table continues but i cropped it off to you know just to show what we needed um, the problem statement tells tells us that we're dealing with high strength concrete and concrete, of course, is not this simple. In real life, concrete is not specified as like low strength or high strength. You can actually custom design concrete to have any number of strengths, but we're gonna just read the values off the table. We're not gonna need the specific weight. We will need the modulus of elasticity. So let's grab that one. That's gonna be 4.2 E3 KSI. Um, and we don't, need anything else except for the Poisson's ratio, nu. And I, I am accustomed to seeing this more of a, um, a nu that looks like this rather than just like a lowercase v. But there are different symbols used by different segments of engineers. All right, I think I've got everything I need from the table. So I'm just going to kill these layers, pop this one back on, and write the two pieces of information that are going to be of importance and of use to us. That modulus of elasticity is 4.2 E3 KSI, or that one is also commonly expressed without engineering notation. So that would just be 4,200 KSI. And Poisson's ratio was given to us as uh, 0.15. All right, we are asked to do a few things. First, draw a free body diagram, um, and we've done that, right? So this body is in equilibrium. That particular sketch does meet the requirements that says draw a free body. Either one is okay. If left to my own devices, if I wasn't teaching, I would definitely draw this in 2D and not in 3D.
either is acceptable. And now we just need to figure out our different strains. So what is the longitudinal strain? And here, all we need to do is say that the longitudinal strain for us, that's the strain in the x direction. You can think of that as the primary strain or the strain that matches the direction of these compressive forces. After that, we'll figure out what the lateral strain is. And these lateral strains correspond to the other two directions. So we know that when we push on this cube of concrete in the x direction, it's going to uh, get shorter in the x direction. So maybe I'll just make a note here. We expect this will be negative. But these secondary effects, that's what we use Poisson's ratio to study, they will make the concrete bulge out in the other two directions. So that's going to be the strain, normal strain epsilon sub y for the y direction and also in the z direction. And since our Poisson's ratio is positive, for most materials that'll be positive, that means that we're going to swap the signs out. We'll reverse the sign. So we'll have negative strain in the principal direction, in the x direction, and we'll have positive strains or increases in length with respect to the two cross sectional dimensions. All right, let's just do some calculations. So I'm going to start by doing a stress calculation in the x direction. That's going to be equal to n over a. And I'll go ahead and plug this in. So we're going to have 500 kips of compression. So I'll give that a negative sign. And a cross-sectional area of our plane, this is the one that we're looking at. I'll dash it in in light blue here. See this cross-sectional plane? That is the planar area of 12 inches by 12 inches, or 144 square inches that we want to put in the denominator of our stress equation. I'll multiply this out into four sig figs. I'll get 3.472. In fact, that's a 3.472 bar, and it's perfectly acceptable to indicate that with the bar, just as you always have. And um, this is going to be in KSI, kips per square inch, and it is compressive. And your options here, you know, either put a negative sign in front or use the C in parentheses to indicate compression. Just don't do both because that double negative actually leads to more confusion. Even if you think you're clarifying, that can be confusing. All right, so we've got our stress in the x direction. And all we want to do is figure out our strain in that direction. And we're going to determine that by using our modulus of elasticity. And we know that for all of these points within the linearly elastic range of the material, each stress corresponds to exactly one strain. So we've got a stress here, we've got a strain here, and we can determine that we can determine one given the other by using the modulus of elasticity. So in other words, the equation we want to use is modulus of elasticity. That's the slope or the rise over the run. So this is a good equation to commit to memory if you haven't already done so. And of course, we're not solving for modulus of elasticity here. We're solving for a strain. And so I'm going to multiply both sides by strain epsilon, divide both sides by modulus of elasticity, and we'll plug into this equation, sigma x divided by the modulus. Um, if you're wondering, you know, how do we know that this stress you know, the, so we've got 500 kips of force. We know how much stress that has caused. How do we know that we're within this clear linear relationship or proportional relationship between stress and strain? How do we know we're not up here? And the answer is 
this little blue note that's given to you and it says please assume linearly elastic material behavior and that's an assumption you can usually uh, you can always make in this particular course okay you can always make that assumption in this course because in this course we, our focus is not nonlinear behavior if you were doing this in real life or in another course um, you probably should spot check your stress compare it to the material limits and make sure you know what part of the curve you're on for me i'm ready to plug and chug so i'll put that stress into my um, numerator pop that negative sign on for compression uh, modulus of elasticity down here in the denominator make sure your units match up so that you can cancel them out divide through and we'll get a strain of negative 826.7 e minus 6 and that is unitless, but we are accustomed to expressing strain with this strange ratio of units. So I'm going to keep the negative sign for my final answer, condense down to three sig figs, 827 e minus 6. And then the units I'm going to use, I'm in US customary units. So I'm just going to put inches per inch. And that is the first part of our answer. Okay, So we solved our longitudinal strain by looking at these fundamental relationships between stress and strain. And now I would like to do my lateral strains. And this is where we're going to bring our friend Poisson to the party and do a little Poisson's ratio. And this is the new concept. The other bit of stuff in this problem is review. Here is how we define Poisson's ratio. And I guess I should write it in its most pure form. I'll do that over here to the right. So I'll say Poisson's ratio is defined as the negative ratio of lateral strain to longitudinal strain. All right, and I think of these a lot of times in terms of primary and secondary strain. So it's kind of like if my primary strain down here was like, let's make it really big, like 0.1. OK, and if my secondary strain, let's make this an easy one to compute. Let's say it's 0 0.05. OK, that means my lateral strains are are half those of my longitude. So that would be a material that Poisson's ratio would be 0 0.5. That's pretty big. Most of our good engineering materials have a Poisson's ratio a little lower, usually kind of in the range of you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. In the case of our concrete, of course, we have 0 0.15. Um, but what this negative sign says is that if this one tends to be an elongation type of strain, then this one has to be a shortening type of strain and vice versa. OK. Let's go ahead and plug in. We're ready to go. So my lateral strains, specifically, these would be my strains in the y direction and strains in the z direction. Put the negative sign there, plug in Poisson's ratio. We're going to, so this is 0.15 or 15%. In other words, 15% of the longitudinal strains, that'll tell me the magnitude of the lateral strains. And then I just have to remember to change the sign. That's why the negative sign is there. Plug in our longitudinal strain that we just calculated. And here I want to make sure I do grab those four sig figs because I want to report a final accuracy of three. Up here we've got two negative signs. Of course, those are going to cancel out for us. We will get a positive value as we predicted. So our lateral strain is showing that this cross section, this 12 by 12 inch cross section here, is getting a little bit bigger. It's bulging out because of this compressive force in the x direction. The last little bit is just a calculator operation. I'll give you the final answer to three sig figs. I would write this in this way, 124 e minus 6, or that's 10 to, 10 to the minus 6, 
and then those funky strain units, inches per inch. Why do we use them? It's just a convention. If you had left this answer as unitless, I wouldn't mark points off for that, but I do prefer for you to use the proper lingo and getting used to the funky inches per inch unit is part of that. That's the end of this video. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.